lies. Damn lies. That's not what education is all about. Education is important. And for all of us, if we had to listen to no education, what will we do with this campus? What will I do? The fact of matter, when we heard that video, there is some truth in it. And I thought, let's go through that entire discussion on what's truth, what's lies, and what's education. Since the topic is so controversial, I thought, let me put on my Iron Man armor suit and go forward on this conversation. So I started with a disclaimer, my insurance policy. This is what education is, is what we think it is. Education is not the learning of facts, but the training of the mind to think. And this is what we expect from education. This is what we believe education to do for us. But what happens in real life? From an India context and what we go through, from a society context, the pressures that come up, it's all about studies, it's all about results, it's all about percentages, it's all about GPAs, the focus. We are all staying in a very pressure cooker environment. We're saying study, study, study. Focus on exams, crack the exams, mug, cram, swat. Where is the learning? It's all about eat, study, sleep, etc. And this is what happens. You can do anything you want, but be a doctor or an engineer. Failure is not an option. We all need to succeed. There are universities in Delhi where the cutoff is 95%, 98%. Where does the rest of the community go? And that's the challenge that we have in education. So while we have education which is very critical and fundamental to us, it's the way we approach it from society, from parents, from institutions, on how we deliver it, which is a big challenge for us. This is what happens. Uh, be a doctor, be an engineer, the focus comes on that. All of us as parents want this for our children. Uh, we are willing to make the maximum amount of sacrifice for them. But what happens? Uh, we want them to actually go out and do better than what we've done. But we put them through that pressure cooker, we put them through that result orientation, and we internally, with the best of intentions, still try and focus on getting them something without really checking whether that's their skill set, that's their talent, and is that what they really wanted to do? So we actually sit and put all students into a very structured environment of a one-shoe-fits-all scenario. And there are, every child is different, every child has a unique skill set. But what do we do? We just put them all into the same conveyor belt and get them through the same stuff. So what happens then? This is what happens. We are mass-producing semi-finished resources who in the end of the day may not be relevant in the corporate world. We also take all students and put them to the same tests without checking up whether they are really fit and conditioned for it. As I said, each child has unique skill set. But do we assess, do we identify, do we check what is right for them? We put them into that conveyor belt and everybody gets tested. So some succeed and some don't. But are those that don't succeed not good enough? I'm sure they've had fantastic talents. It's just that we've not identified it, we've not nourished it, we've not nurtured it. And we've not given them a chance to really blossom with the talent they have. 65% of today's school kids will end up doing jobs that haven't even been invented yet. So we will end up, if we continue in the same way, produce more and more students not fully relevant. And that's the challenge we have if we continue in the same way we deliver education. Just for, your, for an example, what happens when you follow your passion, take your talent, follow your passion, make it your profession? You get a whole lot of stuff, new careers, and wonderful learning of opportunities. You don't need to be a doctor, you don't need to be an engineer. There's a whole surfeit of new skills and talents for which you can really blossom. And that's what we need to do from an education setup, which allows, identifies, and produces an environment where students can go out and really look forward in terms of the new skills they can develop and really nurture with. Illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. Today we live in a dynamic world 
we live in a world which is disruptive and full of flux. We also, looking at that, understand that learning will need to be continuous. The day you stop learning is the day you will actually be irrelevant. So we need an education system that really takes you through learning continuously. Today we have a whole lot of new certification programs that come that help people with continuous learning even after they are employed because at some point of time in a world, the current skill set you have in such a world which is so disruptive will make you irrelevant. So what is future ready? Education's purpose is to replace an empty mind with an open one, is what we really want to do. If we really have to do that, we need to provide an education environment. Uh, education being critical, we need to provide an environment where people's minds are ignited, their curiosity is kindled, they, they are inquisitive, we need to nurture that, and we also need to facilitate an environment where they're completely exploring and discovering. We need to remove that thought of fear of failure. That's a big risk for them. They are, fa they are scared of failing. They should fail. They should learn from failure because that's the best learning that they get. All the great inventions and discoveries in this world wouldn't have happened if people didn't fail. They succeeded because they failed many, many times. So we need to stimulate the creative instinct of all these students of ours without the fear of failure. As Elon Musk said, failure is an option today in the current world. If things are not failing, you're not innovating enough. And today, in a disruptive world, innovation is your only lifeline to succeed. What happens if you don't do these things? Many years ago, I was on the left-hand side. Today, happily, I'm sitting on the right-hand side. But would you be future-ready? Is something that's food for thought. So let's not keep building more bricks in the wall and producing more and more robots. Let's get more and break the wall and let's get people more creative. Let's kindle, let's pro provide an environment in which children are stimulated, their creative minds are kindled so that they can go out, follow their talent, follow their passion, and really if you want to provide an environment, take that passion, make it the profession. I think that's what Future Ready is all about. Thank you.